The Nazca civilization thrived along the southern coast of Peru from around 200 BCE to 600 CE. They settled primarily in the Nazca valleys, with important religious activities centered in Kawachi and urban life taking place in Ventilla. This civilization is renowned for its unique pottery, textiles, and the famous Nazca lines etched into the desert floor. The Nazca people coexisted with and eventually succeeded the Paracas culture. Interestingly, many Paracas sites are discovered beneath Nazca settlements. The political structure of the Nazca civilization is often characterized as a collection of chieftains, sometimes collaborating for mutual benefit, rather than a centralized state. In the words of M. E. Mosley, the Nazca culture embodied individuality with cultural coherence, yet lacked large-scale or integrated power. This perspective is mirrored in Nazca art and architecture, which reveal shared themes among settlements, but a lack of uniform urban planning or signs of central authority. The Nazca population likely reached its peak at about 25,000 individuals, distributed across small villages built on terraced hills close to irrigated floodplains. As the Nazca culture evolved, its influence extended into the Pisco Valley to the north and the Akari Valley to the south. Despite the absence of llamas, alpacas, and vacunas in coastal regions, the presence of their wool in Nazca textiles suggests trade connections with highland cultures. Notably, mummies from Nazca tombs have been found adorned with headdresses made from feathers of rainforest birds, illustrating long-distance trade interactions. Graves, often situated up to four, five meters deep and accessible through a shaft, provide valuable insights into Nazca culture. They contain various artifacts that shed light on different aspects of their society. Fine pottery and textiles were placed alongside the deceased, with no distinct gender-based differences in burial practices. The bodies were mummified, carefully wrapped in textiles, and frequently seated. Some skulls exhibit intentional elongation, and evidence suggests that the Nazca practiced tattooing. Tombs, particularly those with mud brick linings and shafts, could be reopened to add more mummies, potentially indicating reverence for ancestors. Trophies such as severed heads were often found in these tombs, sometimes displaying signs of trepanation. These heads were sometimes incorporated into pottery designs or textile art. There were also burials of apparent sacrificial victims, marked by blocked eyes and symbolic acts involving the mouth or tongue. The Nazca civilization faced a significant setback due to a prolonged drought lasting a generation in the 5th century CE. Eventually, they fell under the rule of the Wari civilization, which absorbed many aspects of their artistic style. Following the conquest, Nazca settlements remained at a provincial level and never regained their former prominence. Ventilla served as the primary urban hub of the Nazca civilization, encompassing over two square kilometers, 495 acres. It featured ceremonial mounds, enclosed courts, and terraced housing. To combat the constant threat of drought, the Nazca people constructed an intricate network of subterranean aqueducts, galleries, and cisterns. This system ensured a stable water supply during dry periods and minimized water evaporation. The underground structures were accessed through impressive descending spiral ramps and lined with river cobbles. Established around 100 BCE on the southern bank of the Nazca River, Kawachi held significant religious importance for the Nazca civilization. Positioned about 50 kilometers inland, it emerged as a pilgrimage site and the religious capital. The primary factor contributing to its sacred status was its reliable year-round water supply, a rarity in the region. Notably, Kawachi lacked domestic architecture, indicating it wasn't used as a living area. The sacred area covers approximately 11.5 square kilometers, 2,841 acres, and features around 40 sizable adobe mounds strategically placed on natural hills. The largest mound, known as the Great Temple, stands over 20 meters tall. Each mound is accompanied by a plaza and crowned with adobe walls. The most spacious plaza measures 47 by 75 meters. Encircling the main sacred precinct is a low wall, 40 centimeters high. The site displays evidence of posts and post holes, suggesting that canopies provided shade for worshippers. Depictions in textiles also hint at connections between religious gatherings and harvest festivals. Piles of discarded pottery shards discovered at the site indicate ritual feasting, intentionally left to become part of the mounds. Thus, 
the extent of mound use correlates with their ritual significance. Some mounds contained burials and large pots filled with fine textiles, offered as religious tributes. Further insight into the religious ceremonies potentially conducted at Kawachi is depicted in Nazca art, particularly on pottery. Many of these depictions involve shamans, religious figures who, in drug-induced trances, sought assistance from nature spirits to ensure favorable agricultural conditions. Music played a crucial role in these rituals, evident from numerous ceramic drums and panpipes found in archaeological contexts. The principal Nazca deity appears to be the oculate being, portrayed as a flying figure adorned with strings of trophy heads. This deity is often represented horizontally with flowing streamers, large staring eyes, and a snake-like tongue. The Nazca people created geoglyphs and lines across the surrounding desert and hills. These designs included stylized depictions of animals, plants, humans, and simple lines connecting sacred sites or pointing toward water sources. While the exact purpose of these creations is debated, a widely accepted theory suggests they were utilized in religious rites and processions, serving as pathways to be walked along. Crafting these ancient lines involved the relatively straightforward removal of dark surface rocks, revealing lighter colored desert floor underneath. Most designs are visible only from above, although some were made on hillsides and are viewable from the ground. These lines could be singular, both straight and curved, or arranged in complex networks. Their width and length varied, some lines extended up to 20 kilometers, and the collective length of Nazca lines is estimated at over 1,300 kilometers. Shapes were often formed using a single continuous line. Designs ranged from geometric shapes to animals like hummingbirds, spiders, and killer whales. Human figures, trees, plants, and flowers were also common subjects. Many of these designs were vast in scale, some equivalent to sports fields. Created over multiple centuries, newer designs frequently overlapped and disregarded older ones. This suggests a lack of long-term planning and unified intention, indicating that various groups made them at different times and for multiple purposes. The Nazca people, much like other cultures in South America, displayed a ponchon for various forms of artistic expression, particularly wool weaving, embroidery, and painting on cotton fabric. The climatic conditions of the Nazca region have remarkably preserved textiles, showcasing the breadth of Andean weaving techniques. Their intricate designs feature a remarkable spectrum of colors and shades. Nazca weavers skillfully employed an array of techniques, producing textiles with intricate and detailed designs. These designs often included figures engaged in harvest scenes, highlighting crops like maize and beans. Animal figures, reminiscent of the geoglyphs and pottery motifs, also made regular appearances in textile patterns. The preservation of looms, spindles, needles, cotton balls, and dye containers in Nazca settlements offers insights into the textile creation process. Nazca metalworkers displayed their skill by crafting gold into thin sheets that were meticulously cut to form intricate silhouettes. Their preference for smooth and reflective surfaces is evident, with minimal repoussé work used for decorative accents. Notably, they fashioned masks worn over the mouth, giving the wearer a golden beard and whiskers. Bold masks with complete facial features, along with hair plumes and nose-slash-forehead ornaments, were also crafted. These gold masks transformed the wearer's appearance, reminiscent of the transformative rituals practiced by shamans, a frequent subject in Nazca art.